I do comedy to meet white people. <laughs> Another successful night. Being from East New York has been instrumental in my comedy and it, it, it shaped everything I talk about because it's who I am. As comedians, it's important that we talk about uh, things that matter to us and being frank, nothing else matters to me more than this neighborhood. It shaped my worldviews. It shaped the life that I'm trying to provide my kids. And I don't think I'd be who I am and in turn the comic I am without East New York. I hate kids, man. Like, not all kids, because I have kids. But the rest of them kids, plus one of my kids, <laughs> yo, I hate them kids, man. I definitely still pay the majority of my bills from being a landlord, without question. And I don't think there's anything wrong with not necessarily getting to a point to where you make, you know, six figures from comedy or seven figures from comedy. If for the rest of my life I make five, ten grand from jokes, let's say, which is less than what I made now, but it's money. Like, it means that someone respected my craft. I still wouldn't stop doing comedy. I, I still like telling jokes. I still like being a comedian. And I figured out a way to fund it. 20 years ago, uh, my grandfather used a whole bunch of chickens and security for the house. You know, if you broke into the house, chickens make noise and it made us safe. Uh, 20 years later, my wife was taking the train station and she still saw two chickens. So to this day, the chickens are here doing their job, securing East New York. That building was abandoned for years. Orange were there. We used to put mice in socks and like throw them into the building and wake up the crackheads that slept in there. You would hear like random people just running around. Like, oh shit, oh shit, who put this in here? My album's called Immigrant Made. Um, everything I am and everything that I've been able to get was only possible because of the work and the sacrifices made by my parents who were immigrants. Um, they both came here from the Dominican Republic. I wanted to shine light on that and then directly I wanted to kind of show love to them. You know, like I'm, I'm fucking telling jokes, you know, for a living. And it's only realistic because it's on their backs. I tell stories and everyone's like, yo, you're real funny at telling these stories. I'm just talking like my dad. So I'm always wondering if like his dad would have came here 50 years ago, would my dad be a comic? Would he be had the freedom to do this? Because he would have grown up with that being a realistic thing. Having kids is the only way I know how to do comedy, actually. I started after I had them. They are directly a part of almost everything I talk about. I wouldn't do comedy if they weren't here because I wouldn't have anything to talk about. They are immensely involved in almost everything I do in life. And it comes out in my comedy. Um, and also, there's an insane amount of work ethic that goes into being a comedian that I did not have until I had kids. I got called into the principal's office last week. I'm an adult. I don't go to school no more. And they demanded to talk to me. He said, Mr. Amante, we had a problem last week outside of the school. I said, what's the problem? Uh, one of the parents complained about you uh, knocking over another child. <laughs> They're like, well, did you push the child? I was like, no. Um, it was a lot more like an NBA pick, you know? <laughs> like, I didn't get out the way, but I stood firm, you know? Now, like, Gasol, you think you could have handled that differently? I'm like, ma'am, I'm six feet tall. I'm 300 pounds, and I don't walk fast. If that kid didn't see me coming, he's not going to see life coming. Um, I view uh, comedy albums as uh, a testament to who you are as a comic and as a person. Um, I've kind of taken on this additional idea that, yo, your, your comedy could say more. And in my case, I'm trying to rep East New York. I'm really trying to rep uh, being Dominican. I'm really trying to make sure that people realize you could be on, on your own business shit. You could own your own specials. You could own your masters on your album. You know, so I talk about owning property in my in my specials. 
um, for a reason, because that's I believe in being independently productive. I want all of my albums going forward to kind of work together as a unit. I want them to kind of make sense that they go in a particular order. If I'm changing as a person and what I'm learning and digesting is changing, so should my album. It should reflect that. Um, and you know, just like worst case scenario, you know, I, I eat like shit. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna make it till you know 80. So if something goes wrong with me, I want my kids to be able to play my album and you know, like really be able to gain something from it. You know, I want all that to kind of hit and give them a broad picture of who I was as a man and hopefully affect who they become as, as people.